Anthony is gonna show you how to make sourdough bread like a baker. Oh, guys, you're gonna become a sourdough lover, like me. He talks too much. Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate <laughs> with Anthony's Plate, the master of all bakers. Yeah. Today we are making sourdough bread. Yes. So what machine do we need to use to make this bread? Oh, Vincenzo machine. What? We're going to do this by hand. By hand? Absolutely. Yes, let's use by hand. Hey, handmade is the best. best. So please show us how to make the best sourdough bread. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the ingredients that's really important to use in your sourdough bread. The first thing is the type of flour that you use. This is a white bread flour, and this is a variety that we grow here in Australia called Lancer. But if you go to the supermarket and you go to buy your flour for your sourdough bread, just make sure that you're buying a bread flour or a baker's flour. And that's going to be a flour that has a high percentage of protein, which will be high enough to make sure that we can develop a beautiful structure inside of our dough, okay? So we've got 360 grams of this flour. I've also got here a little bit of wholemeal flour, 40 grams, okay? Very importantly is our sourdough starter. And you can see the bubbles on top there. We've got 290 grams of water here, eight grams of salt. We're using a river salt today. And then here, little optional ingredient is some diastatic malt powder. Diastatic malt powder is made from sprouted grain that has been dehydrated and ground down into a powder. It's full of lots of enzymatic activity, which can create a really efficient fermentation inside of your dough. But it is optional, and we only use two grams in there, so it's a very small amount makes a big difference to the fermentation of your dough, but if you don't use it, you're still gonna be able to make good bread because I know it can be a little bit hard to find. The first step to mixing your sourdough bread together is to start adding your water to the bowl. Now we're going to add our sourdough starter and it smells beautiful. It's very ripe and bubbly and gassy. Do you notice, Vincenzo, that when we pop our sourdough starter into the water, it's so ripe and beautiful and gassy that on top of the water it floats. Oh yeah. Actually, Can you see yeah. that? It's very light. You know, it's a really good indication that your starter is ready to use in your bread. Okay, they would call this the float test. If it's not floating, it might be under fermented. So you might need to leave it to ferment a little longer and build up some more gases. So now it's time to add the rest of our ingredients in. We've got our white baker's flour here, that lancer flour. We've got our wholemeal flour. I've got my malt powder. I put the salt last because I don't want it to touch the uh, sourdough starter. The salt, you know, has natural antibacterial properties and the starter has natural bacteria in it, so we don't want them to mix directly, so we add them separately, okay? Now, just simply with a spoon, I'm going to mix all of these ingredients together. And this first stage of mixing, all that you're really trying to do is to get all of the flour hydrated. So I'm not looking to mix this for minutes upon minutes. It's like a no-knead bread. It's very much like that. We're going to do some folds in a moment, but it's very, very simple. Basically, anyone can make it. Anyone can make it. Now, Vincenzo, simply we just need to cover this and then we're going to let it rest for three hours, okay? And what's important about this resting stage is the flour is hydrating and naturally the gluten, which comes from the proteins in the flour, is going to start to develop. And at every hour mark within the three hours, so after one hour, after two hours, and then at the three hour mark, we're going to help the development of that gluten by giving the dough some folds. So we'll come back in one hour and see that happen. So it's been one hour that our dough has been resting and fermenting all on its own, and there's been lots happening to the dough without us even touching it. Let's have a little look. What I'm more interested in is if I pull some dough off, okay, can you see that if I stretch it between my hands, it's starting to become a little bit stretchy, mm. okay? The elasticity is good. That's right, and the extensibility. 
So this little test I'm doing here, we call the window pane test. Can you see at the moment how it's very uneven and it's breaking quite easily? Yes. Okay. So this indicates to us that the dough is underdeveloped. What you're going to notice though, is the more we leave the dough to ferment and to rest, and the more folds that we physically do to the dough, the elasticity and the extensibility is going to get better and better. And you'll see this beautiful fine window pane that we'll be able to fold out. It's time to take it out of the bowl, pop it on the bench and give it its first fold. One of the troubles that a lot of people can run into with a beautiful sourdough dough is that they might think that the dough is really sticky when in fact it's not. And I'll show you why. If you touch the dough with a dry hand, it sticks quite easily. So I've just got a little bit of water here and you can see the difference with a slightly wet hand. There's no stick at all. Very, very simple. So I'm going to take all the sides and fold them to the opposite way. Do the same over here. And that's it, that's our fold. I can just bring it all into a bit of a ball, tucking the sides underneath. And that's ready to now go back into the bowl for the next hour to rest and we'll come back in an hour's time and give it its second fold. Now it's time to give the dough its second fold. And before we do that, we're going to tip it out onto the bench and just perform that window pane test again to check how the dough is coming along and developing. Remember, when we touch the dough, it really helps if you use some slightly wet hands. So we'll have a look at our dough now. I'm going to put this out onto the bench and I'm just going to take some dough and you can see how oh, it is yeah. now. More elastic and you can see, oh yeah, it's not breaking. Beautiful window pane. So remember, we pick it up from all sides and fold it over the opposite way, just like we did the first time. But you're going to notice this time that the dough has a lot more elasticity. Look at that. It's really beautiful. I can tell that it's developing nicely. And once it's folded all over, I can just start to round it up nice and gently into a nice clean ball. And now this is going to go back into our bowl for one last hour. So after three hours, our dough is now ready to handle. We're going to remove the dough from the bowl onto our bench. It's lovely and relaxed. Use some help from a little bit of water. Okay, and get underneath. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it a couple times, just like we did before, like this. Turn it over so we got the smooth side up and we're just going to come around now and gently shape this into a beautiful, tight, smooth ball. Now that we've shaped our dough, we need to pop it into some type of mold. Now, traditionally, the bakers would use what we call a banneton basket, okay? But a lot of you don't have banneton baskets at home. So another thing that you can do that most people have is a leftover container from the ricotta. All you need to do is grab yourself a tea towel, pop it inside. We can dust it generously with some flour. Now this is the smooth side of the dough here on top. Okay, this is what we want to end up becoming the top of our loaf, the presentation side. What we're going to do is we're going to pop it into the banneton or into your basket upside down. This is going to end up becoming the bottom of your loaf because when the loaf is proofed and ready, we're going to tip it back upside down. So just dust it again with some flour and then tuck it into bed and off it goes. So now we need to pop this basket of dough into the fridge overnight. We call this part of the process retarding, which is a slow fermentation process where when the dough goes into the fridge at four degrees, it becomes really, really cold and our uh, microorganisms go into a state of dormancy, but the enzymes get to work and we build on a lot of that beautiful flavor and it becomes really easy to digest from that really slow fermentation. So minimum 12 hours um, in the fridge overnight. And then tomorrow, before it's time to bake, we take it back out of the fridge for a good, say, four or five hours, depending on where you live and the temperature of the day. But we're gonna show you a little trick to know when your loaf is ready and fully proofed, ready to bake. 
time to learn how to bake your sourdough bread. We're going to now preheat our oven on the conventional setting, not fan force, on the conventional setting at 240 degrees Celsius. We're going to pop our Dutch oven inside the oven to preheat as well, lid and all, so it gets really nice and hot. And we're going to leave it in the oven for a good hour before it's time to bake. Let me show you how you know when your dough is properly proofed and ready to bake. What we do is we apply a little bit of pressure with some flat fingers and you just need to watch how the dough responds to that pressure. So when I press on it, can you see that it bounces back up nice and slowly? That's a good indication that it's ready to be baked. It's fully proofed, okay? If I was to press on the dough and it would bounce back really quickly, that tells me that the dough is underproofed and it needs longer. It's got too much energy left in it still. So then you would leave it for a good another half an hour to an hour and then just uh, poke at it a little bit more and see whether it's coming back at you nice and slowly. Okay, now that our loaf has been fully proofed, it's time to tip it out. Oh, nice, beautiful dough. Beautiful dough. Look at that. Now we're going to use this tool called Alarm with a blade so that we can score the loaf really beautifully. I'll just pop it onto my tool. And here we go, we're going to use the very sharp corner at an angle, nice and gentle motion to cut this way and cut this way and cut this way. Okay, now carefully lift up your bread using the baking paper to help you so you don't burn yourself and pop it into the hot Dutch oven. We're going to place the lid on top. Now we're going to bake this in the oven with the lid on for 20 minutes. Then we're going to take the lid off and cook it for a further 20 minutes. The type of flour that you use is really important when you make sourdough bread or any bread for that matter. It needs to be a bread or a baker's flour, which is going to have a high protein content. So we're usually talking about a protein of 11 or 12% and higher. Okay, if you use a regular all purpose flour or a plain flour, typically those flours, the protein content is too low to make bread. Okay, it's been 20 minutes. It's now time to remove the lid from the Dutch oven. So let's do that now, carefully. So now that it's baked with the lid on for 20 minutes, you can see that we've increased the volume of the loaf, but we haven't got much color happening. So now we need to put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes without the lid on top, so we can develop a nice, deep, delicious crust. Let's see, let's see. Uh, it's looking good, but still another five, six minutes. We want to get a lovely, dark, deep golden crust. Here we are. Look at that beautiful, deep golden crust. Wow, 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 wow. This is how you make sourdough bread like a baker. Oh, look at that. Look you hear that? Look at that. Nice and hollow. And you must bake the bread nice and dark too to get that beautiful flavor in the crust. Don't bake it too light. Nice and nice and deep and dark so it's got some lovely character. Now that we've baked our beautiful sourdough loaf off, it's time to fight the temptation. Do not cut into it straight away because it's too hot. We need to allow it to rest on a wire rack for a few hours to cool completely and then we can cut into it. Can't wait. If we cut into this while it's really hot, it's not good because we're going to squash the loaf and we're going to let all of the steam come out. We want to allow it to cool completely so the crumb inside can set and then it's going to be beautiful and chewy texture. Anthony, the thing is, mm. the crust is the most important thing in the bread, you know? Absolutely. The taste, of course, but the crust. It needs to be deep, dark, golden. I can't sound, I can't feel any. Can, you make, can you make the sound, Listen please? This. Yum, please yum. Please again, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> a round of applause, a round of applause. So Anthony, you made a very nice crunchy sourdough bread, but yeah. is it meant to be crunchy, the sourdough bread? Absolutely, the first day that you make it, yeah. um, and even the following day, it's still gonna be lovely and crunchy, but um, as the days go on, yes. it's still really nice to eat, yes. but it's going to lose some of its texture. 
active, okay. Yeah. And um, what about how long does it last? Does it last three, four days? Does it go moldy after a week? What? Me, only one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess so. I mean, I need three of these too. But if you want to bring the life back yes. into the dough to get that crunch back, you can just pop it back in the oven, or okay. if you slice it, you can toast it. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful for days and days and days. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, good to know. Yeah. What if I want to make my bread a little bit bigger? Let's say I have eight people coming over, okay? Yeah. This is not enough for eight people. For yeah. Me. Well, what do I do? What can I use? You can make two loaves. <laughs> <laughs> I like the face. You see the face? <laughs> Oh, this is the moment we've been waiting for, my friend. I can't wait, Vincenzo. The moment we've Let's been do it. For. Listen to this, you ready? Oh my god. Yeah. Look at yeah. this, look at this, look at this. Yeah. Uh, yes. Come on, Vincenzo. It's time to eat this beautiful crusty bread. Get some olive oil, come on. It's a lovely result, isn't it? So we've got some beautiful deep golden crust happening. Smells lovely. The crumb structure is really, really nice. It's got some nice openness to it. It's not too heavy and dense. And that's due to all the gluten development that we did with the folding of the dough um, and that beautiful fermentation, the long, slow fermentation that we allowed the bread. So this is gonna go down really nicely. All right, guys, good luck on your sourdough journey. We hope that you are going to really, really enjoy it. Please don't get discouraged if things don't turn out as planned to begin with. It is a journey, it'll take a little bit of time and practice, but you're going to get there. Your loaves might turn out a little bit flat to begin with. You may not get the right fermentation, the right crumb structure that you're looking for. It's all about playing around with your recipe and getting used to the process and it's going to turn out just beautiful. This is the best time of the video. Yeah, beautiful Sicilian extra virgin olive oil. Yep. And what do we do now? All we have to do is dip and enjoy. Let's do it. Oh. Chin chin. Chin chin. Mmm. <laughs> mm. mm. Wow. You can't buy something like this at the shop. I'm sorry. But you can't get anything like this. This mm. is so good. Homemade. Homemade is, is the best, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mmm. So crusty. Mmm. Very moist mm. on the inside and full of flavors. Beautiful, wow. chewy, waxy texture. This is sourdough made right. Mm. The flavors are really unique. Yeah, it's really, lovely. Really unique. You can get this from the East. Beautiful. Anthony, I'm not kidding. Anthony, this <clears throat> is... This is... The best sourdough bread I've ever had in my life. Really? Mm. Thank not you very kidding. much. I'm not kidding, my friend. Yeah. Now you can make it. I'm, I don't know much about bread. Yeah. I only found out about sourdough maybe two years ago. Yeah. It's not a thing for me. Yeah. Now it is a thing for me. Yeah. And this, this is the bread that can make me say, I think sourdough is the best bread you can get in mm. life. Yeah. Until yeah. yesterday, I was not so convinced. Yeah. Yeah. I can say, you know, Panetica has all this bread. Mm. But I think this is. It's amazing. The best bread you can get on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. So delicious and so nutritious for you too. So healthy. Um, I'm really amazed. Yeah. Anthony, I will be so grateful forever because the, we have the best sourdough recipe Look online and it's on Vincenzo's plate. There you go. Please write a comment for this wonderful <laughs> baker. Please. Don't forget to subscribe. To what? Vincenzo's plate. <laughs> Yum, yeah. yum. <laughs> I love this guy. So we'll see you in the next videos. He will be with us. He is going to show you how to make baguette. Ooh, yum. Oh, yum, yum. yum. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe. And so... <laughs> e ora si mangia. Vincenzo's plate. Ciao. Ciao.